Nice lines, Mr. Delaney. Maybe he should be out there. Mark Fawcett, the winner in Sugarloaf, the giant slalom race. His fellow Canadian, JCJ Anderson, has the lead on this course right now with just over one minute and five seconds. Lots of wind kicking here on Mark Fawcett's run. It's kind of a luck of the draw there. The wind's going to be blowing up in your face, side angle, or maybe if you're lucky, at your back. And we talked about conditions, Kevin, and you feel Mark Fawcett being an all-mountain type rider has a big advantage in what we're seeing here. Mark Fawcett very used to riding all types of snowboarding conditions. Big mountain, extreme riding, slalom, GS, freestyle. He's going to use every bit of his wide variety of talents to negotiate this course, which definitely is deteriorating fast. Conditions are tough, but we're seeing a lot of handiwork, and Fawcett almost down on the right-hand turn. He manages to recover, but Fawcett using the mountain a little more than we like to see with the hands. Yes, putting the hands down does detract from the weight or the pressure on the edge of the snowboard, the carving edge there. But Fawcett is a master of solid snowboarding technique. And what a great time. Mark Fawcett, 105.54. Anderson, the other Canadian, moves to second. Fawcett now the leader. Fawcett uses a few fundamental techniques here. Consistent level shoulders, you'll see here. He takes a wide line around the gate and maintains vertical pressure on the carving edge of his snowboard. An incredible compact rider uses his strong legs to his advantage in these difficult, bumpy conditions. After one run, the Canadians are one and two here in Mount Bachelor. The 1997 Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix presented by Chevy S10 Trucks is being brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Chevy S10 Pickup. When we come back, you can fly without wings. The Airwalk Aaron Style Contest yet to come. Now there's an easier way to get a piece of Super Bowl history. Introducing Sprint's Super Bowl prepaid phone. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> buddy. I'll trade you my scarf for that last Bud Light. Come on. But the hat? That's fair. <laughs> what more could you possibly want, huh? <laughs> oh. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. I never said it was the last one. Make it a Bud Light. <laughs> Somewhere, some poor slob's punching a time clock. He don't know what he's missing. Wake up, come on, get up, son. We gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Dan Wolf, champion bull rider. This is what he does. This is what he drives. Pretty nice life. Chevy S10, like a rock. As the snow flies in Mount Bachelor for the U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix, most everyone's attention is on Nagano and the 1998 Winter Olympic Games, where the first ever winter snowboard team from the United States will contest the world. The road to Nagano for Olympic qualifying is three Grand Prix events. This is the second of that three. The average of two best finishes in the top four, men and women from each discipline, will make the first ever United States Olympic snowboard team. In Sugarloaf, Mark Fawcett, we talked about the Canadian, the big winner, but Chris Klug making a great effort and with a good finish here, probably a trip to Japan. And the pressure is on here at Mount Bachelor for all the U.S. riders to make the U.S. Olympic team. Rob Burney in the start gate now. Best World Cup finish last year was second. Seventh at Sugarloaf. The first of three Grand Prix stops as we look forward to shaping up this U.S. Olympic snowboard team. Rob Burney looks like he entered a hell-like course here. Wind's blowing, snow's flying. Lots of bumps for the previous riders. And as the day wears on, the ruts get deeper and deeper, which presents a bigger challenge for the top-seeded riders. There, Rob Burney puts his hand into the panel, which spins him around the corner here. Real difficult to see the bumps. He's double turning a few times, definitely charging it. 
All riders feeling all sorts of pressure to perform here today. Almost sketching out, and every rider today so far, there's another one, has almost gone down at least one time during his run. Very exciting race. Don't know if any of these riders are going to make to the finish. Looks like they're just linking together recoveries here in this battle for the finish line. Smoothing out now on the bottom half of the course. But a horrible time by comparison. 107.43. Rob Bernie, slowest time of the day so far. A disappointed Rob Bernie here, actually charging maybe too hard. Here he comes so inside the gate there. He forearms the panel, just fighting the ruts, coming inside on everyone. Be smart to be patient. Let those turns be a little wider and let the ruts work for your advantage. Rob Bernie, fourth after round number one. To the top we go, Darren Chalmers, a little known Canadian national team member, looking to bring big talent here to Mount Bachelor. Another big, tall rider. He's got a lot of room for suspension there, and he's going to need it. Well, you can see the board just coming right off the snow surface. Hard to hold an edge. Entering the steep section here is where the rider really needs to be on top of their game. The only advantage here you have in this course is to carry a lot of speed from the steeps into the flats. There he gets a little wide. The end, you can see the flats approaching. He needs to be really smart here. This is where he'll have a real good opportunity to start hard carving the turns, getting a good edge. The snow a little deeper on the bottom section of the course. Chalmers looking nice and smooth right here through these last few gates. Should be putting together a pretty good time here. 106-47, Darren Chalmers after one run. The Canadian is on the board. Chris Klug now, a guy that we are watching out for. He grew up just 40 miles from here. He trained here for a long time. His father owned an inn, and he could be the hometown favorite, even though he doesn't even live here anymore. The crowd is packed with fans supporting Mr. Klug here. I've had the pleasure to race and train with Chris Klug on my team over the years. The man is solid character, solid athlete, Simple fortitude, perseverance. Kluge, one of those tall, big guys we talked about. Six foot three, 210 pounds. Does size give you an advantage in a GS race? Sometimes weight helps you uh, build some speed in the flats. It can, uh, can carry you down with the force of gravity a little bit better than the light riders. But uh, you also are asking a lot more of your equipment flexing of the board and biting into the snow. Run number one of the giant slalom and Chris Klug with that tall stature doesn't look like he might be zooming down, but he certainly is. 104.12. Chris Klug, bam, right on top of the leaderboard after one run. Chris waxes the field on this run with smooth, round, and patient turns here. He's not jamming his board into the snow much at all just lets that sucker run down the hill. Very fluid. <laughs> Very nice run for Chris Klug. First place finish. After one run, Chris Klug on top of the leaderboard, Canadian Mark Fawcett, JCJ Anderson right behind him, then it's USA in spots number four and five. Much more to come here at Mount Bachelor, high above the Cascade Mountain Range in Oregon. We're getting fighting mad. Giant slalom will continue just a little bit later on. Stick around for that. Coming up next, though, the Airwalk Aaron Style Contest. We're going big. You got us a piece of the front here for eight bucks. 
I sold 99 cents for $12. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. At Ameritrade, we never forget it's your money. That's why we built our business on bringing you fast, accurate trades and seriously low commission. I saved on the rainforest 18 bucks. Trade over the internet for $8, by touchtone phone for $12, or with a broker for just $18, no matter how many shares you buy or sell. I landed on Saturn for $18. After 23 years, we're not exactly new at this. Hey, we were the first to trade on the internet. Check out Ameritrade.com or phone 1-800-592-1210. Open an account by April 15th and get a free IRA for life. I dropped Philip for Parker, Parker for Johnson, Johnson for Coleman. It doesn't get much easier than this. Check out Ameritrade.com or phone 1-800-592-1210 today. Finally, I found paradise. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. Hi, my name is Rick, but everybody calls me the Rick. These are my sports figurines. Now, you know something? A lot of people call these dolls. Um, they're not dolls. They're sports figurines. And I just want to get that straight. Okay, they're not toys. And uh, they're not dolls. They're figurines. Hey, Curtis. That's Curtis Martin. Patriots. Talk all you want about the speed of the giant slalom. Talk all you want about the style of the half pipe. Everybody wants to see and everybody wants to brag about who's king of the hill when it comes to big air. We're in the big air competition. We've shut the lights out here in Oregon and Risto Scott first off the big kicker. Risto Scott flying in here, switches to Fakie. He's got the desire to go higher. Face plant on the way down, but beautiful through the air. Nice big air, but definitely over big because he outdistanced his landing and landed over rotated and flat on his chest. Not big points. Here we see him come off switch stance for front side rodeo 540, looking for seven, but he lands hard and flat. Riding a rodeo and the horse threw him off. And you know what? Crowd loves that. It's like why everybody goes to see racing. For the crashes. Fjorn Linus up top now. Linus, good all around rider, young kid, a lot of potential. Guy rides a mean motocross bike in the summertime and he's ready to huck off this tabletop. Backside inverted 540 with the grab there, but sits down on the landing. Judges hate to see the riders sit down. Look at the difference in points, though. Bjorn Linus, 185. Here leads the jump, goes right upside down. Nice 360 there. Looks like he also had a little more air than he planned. Sat down, but hit it from the judges. Nice jump overall. We're not done with Big Air. We'll put the men on hold for a while. Linus with the lead. Women's Big Air took place a little earlier and some great performances. Kim Bonesack on her first jump, going large under the lights. Tough conditions here. She doesn't hesitate, but rotates. The nice backside 360, lands that clean. 230 points, that's great. Listen to the roar of Mount Bachelor. Then Jessica Dalpiaz. Turbo assist off the start ramp there, and also throws a backside 360, but lands it a little cleaner. Could have made the difference. Nine points better than Bone Sack, and Dalpiez gets a check for 5K, and she's the winner of the Airwalk Air and Style Contest on the women's side. When we come back, we've carved our place out of the mountain. Half-pipe competition still to come, and then the men will continue flying through the night. But next, Giant Slalom. Will somebody knock off Chris Kluge? Meet Sean Graham, veteran stuntman. This is how he lives. This is what he drives. What else would he drive? 
Chevy S10, like a rock. Let's see, it says here you're uh, lazy, highly unmotivated. You have a problem with authority. Yeah, I've got two references to prove that. Well, the only thing I can say is, you demand. You dumb For the great man. taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Technically, I can't give you a raise yet. You're right, policy, schmalsy. <laughs> Honestly, I cannot imagine not having athletes around here. They become part of the culture, really. Four dollars, 62 cents, Mr. Sampras. Sure, they've got their quirks. <coughs> Quiet, please. But like any working relationship, you learn to adjust. Out! Morning, yes, ma'am. Welcome back to the Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix, Mount Bachelor, Oregon. If you're a recreational skier or boarder, great conditions. If you're racing for a spot on the U.S. Olympic team, pretty tough. Chris Klug in the lead right now, fastest time. After one and run, a couple of Canadians right behind him, Fawcett right and J.C.J. Right J. Anderson. And in these types of conditions, it really matters how you tune your board beforehand. High-tech science up there at the top. Definitely expensive wax and hours of board preparation to make each and every competitor's board run like lightning. There's your current leader, Chris Klug. Interestingly, his coach has reset the course for the second round, and it's probably going to be a little bit slower. Actually, it's a more technical course. There seems to be a wider radius of turns. Lots of turns on this course. It actually gets the riders across the hill a little bit more than the first course. And Kevin, from round one to round two, we can barely see Mike Jacoby. The snow is falling so hard. Tough, tough conditions. Look at this visibility. Hard to even see five gates ahead. Once again, time to beat two nights. And important to see that far ahead because the racers are always looking downhill, always planning ahead. Yeah, smart racers looking at least two to three gates ahead. Five gates ideal when you're coming into the steep, but here we have Jacoby with a great time, actually. 1-12-16, the total time, 2-19-22 for Mike Jacoby. Remember the combined time, your final score. Top finishers getting that much closer to Nagano, Japan. After one run, J.C.J. Anderson, the Canadian, four, put in a great time. Three, two, one. J.C.J. is coming out of good position here after his first run. Not known for his conservative riding tactics. He is a go-getter. And I would think he can go out and go after it here because he's already made his Canadian Olympic team, whereas the U.S. guys have to really worry about each other. Yeah, J.C.J. and Mark Fawcett alike, they're basically here as a dash for cash, $10,000 for the winner of this event. The U.S. riders, a little bit more concerned with getting to Nagano. Oh, huge hit, the cross ruts there. The ruts left over from the previous course set causing a few problems for J.C.J. 113.46, little slower time than Mike Jacoby, who you saw a moment ago. 219.13 after two runs. Back to the top, Mark Fawcett, another top Canadian finisher. Seven is on. Mark drops into this battle of a run here. GS, high speeds, a fairly flat start to this course, and then a quite steep section. Riders are really testing their skills, jamming their edges into the snow. Here in Mount Bachelor, the second of three stops from the Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix at the first stop. Mark Fawcett, the man you see here, was the winner in the giant slalom, but he didn't have to deal with these kind of conditions. This is Mark Fawcett. Mark Fawcett coming into view. You can see how much the course has deteriorated. Just watch the board and the legs of these riders take the shocks of each and every turn. Mark Fawcett leaning hard out front for the finish line, 112.64, and there, the fastest combined time on the mountain today. Mark Fawcett jumps all the way to the top of the leaderboard, 218.18. Perhaps those all-mountain riding skills coming into play. Let's head down to Fawcett along with our Kevin Delaney. <laughs> Incredible course conditions. Nothing seems to be working from Mother Nature's end. How'd you negotiate that course? Uh, Aggression and athletics, basically, and a few smarts here and there, but 
You can't see the train, so you just got to feel it and suck it up. So Chris Klug, our former leader after one run, got his work cut out for him. He's got one giant slalom win so far this year. Yeah! And he's pretty pumped about racing in his former hometown. I grew up in Bend, and uh, it's certainly fun to come home and race on my old stomping ground. Be back to Mount Bachelor. It'll be a lot of fun. Six years ago, Chris moved to Colorado, where he now spends the winter months. But during the summertime, he returns to his roots in Central Oregon. He lives with his girlfriend and her family in the quaint town of Sisters, which is about 45 minutes, not that far, from Mount Bachelor. I think I can squeeze it through there. Oh, ha, ha. Back at home in his element, enjoying the love of man's best friend, Chris can take a short breather. We've been traveling so much this year. It's been quite a quite a travel schedule. We just got back from two weeks in Europe following the uh, the first Grand Prix race. Luke was the top American finisher in Sugarloaf, Maine, the first stop in the U.S. Grand Prix, which determines the first ever U.S. Olympic snowboard team. Then in January, he followed it up with a World Cup victory. My uh, famous Swiss house here. I won from the last uh, World Cup in Grechen in Switzerland for winning the giant slalom event over there. It's pretty cool, certainly a kind of an unusual trophy, unlike your regular copper trophy. They put the meats in there and they dry it. It's even got a little door here that opens up. It's put up on stilts and they have these rocks here underneath these circular slate rocks that are for keeping varmints and mice and all out. It's pretty neat. After nine years on the World Cup circuit, Chris is now ready and focused on the road to Nagano. I wrote down my goals in the beginning of the season, and certainly my first goal was to, was to be the number one American uh, going to Nagano, and then also to, to medal at the Olympics. And I think I've, I've positioned myself where I have a great opportunity to do that. It's certainly not a guarantee that I'll go to the Olympics and win a medal, but uh, I have a great chance and to win an Olympic medal. I mean, what's, what's more to say? It'd be a great honor, certainly. And there's no question, Chris has plenty of support from family and friends on his quest for Olympic gold. Who's nice? <laughs> the fan club. Go, Chris, go. And I think one says, Christopher Klug is the best. All right. Uh, second grade class, Mr. Albertson, second grade class, and sisters did him. Next up, we got Bill Enos. So excited. Bill Enos working way down the front. It's definitely an advantage just to be able to come home and relax before heading over to. Uh, the third Grand Prix in Mammoth and then off to Nagano. Um, it's just nice to be home for a while, relax, and kind of have a nice atmosphere for the second Grand Prix. The former All-State quarterback from Bend, Oregon, very well known in these parts. His second run. And on course, Chris Kluko is an excellent role model for the sport of snowboarding. A hero in my eyes, and if anybody can come and win this event in his hometown, he has got the strength to do it. Mark Fawcett, the Canadian, the leader right now. Chris Klug would like nothing better than to trade places because in Sugarloaf, Fawcett won. Klug was second for the top U.S. finisher. Well, there's a lot of competitors with their fingers crossed now, hoping that Chris can make this run down and just blister through the finish line. But here, Chris goes wide around that right-hander. His father, Warren, must be suffering from a mild heart attack right now, but he maintains and continues down the run. Looking smooth. Hopefully that won't cost him much there. Klug, so tall, so big, and so smooth. 113.53, the hands in the air in celebration of a victory. Chris Klug, fastest combined time. Well, here we see some excellent snowboarding, level shoulders, vertical body position, nice suspension in the legs there, and he is looking for the finish line. Tight on the panel, smooth edge-to-edge -edge transfer. And the one-time Oregonian is back with a win. He's with Kevin Delaney. Kevin? Incredible run. You battled all sorts of conditions. Competitors, Mother Nature throwing you her worst. Tell me about your second run here. It was a rodeo ride. Just tried to hang on. Do you really, the visibility was really tough. Did you adjust your technique at all to accommodate the soft conditions and poor light? Um, I think I, I came a little bit more from behind. and Maybe... A little bit more careful, just because I knew I had a bit of a margin. Um, so I just took a little more from behind and definitely was looking ahead. Officially, Chris Klug with a time of 2.17. The winner, Canadians Fawcett, JCJ Anderson second and third in a nice push in round two by Mike Jacoby, USA rider, bumping up to spot number four. And for Klug, 
and also Bernie and Jacoby. Great efforts. Gets them that much closer to the first ever U.S. Olympic team and a trip to Nagano, Japan. When we come back to Mount Bachelor, the stylish riding on the half pipe. Stick around for that. But coming up next, the women's giant slalom, Rosie Fletcher. She won Sugarloaf. She'll go for win number two here. So instead of winning this series, they now go to a pivotal game seven. Rich? Rich. If you're really into sports, you'll really be into new ESPN, the magazine, issue after issue. Hello? You'll be involved like no sports magazine ever involved you before. Do we have a problem here? ESPN, the magazine, is big. Bigger in size, bigger with news, pictures, player profiles, inside information, and amazing access to places you've never been before. So call now for ESPN The Magazine. Get 26 issues, a year's worth, for just a dollar an issue, saving you over 66% off the newsstand price. And you'll get this great freebie. T-shirt! The ESPN The Magazine T-shirt. 100% cotton with the world-famous ESPN The Magazine bullseye logo. ESPN The Magazine. At last, you have something to do when you're not watching ESPN. Call 1-800-634-6363. Think you've got a weight problem? Today's athletes live and sometimes die by the scale. Outside the Lines looks at athletes fighting the same battle many of us do. But for them, the stakes can be deadly. The Weight Debate, Sports by the Pound, on the next Outside the Lines, Friday at 8.30 on ESPN. For more racing, women's giant slalom after one run. Lisa Cosgo has the lead. Betsy Shaw right behind a second and three tenths. Rosie Fletcher, who won in Sugarloaf, currently in third. Sandra Van Erd now, consistent five, top five finisher. Four, three, two, one. Out of the start Loving gate, but the snow is so thick at the very top, we join her mid run. Here she is putting together another solid Sandra Van Erd type of ride. Aggressive. Women's GS, a veteran of the Alpine U.S. ski team. She knows gates and she knows competition. You see the visibility problem they're dealing with, barely able to see the gates off in the distance. And the very mature Van Ert, 33 years old, attacking the mountain. Just a blur coming through this course. She has got trouble ahead, but she negotiates it fine, blasting through the finish. And a nice tuck at the bottom, 122.51. Sandra Van Ert after two runs, total time, 2.34. Now one of the ladies to watch out for. Rosie Fletcher, she won in Sugarloaf, looking for back-to-back -back victories. Again, we join you mid-course. The visibility so tough today. Rosie just now coming off the steep head wall here at Mount Bachelor. Needs to carry all her speed into the flats. She raced here at Bachelor a year ago. Wasn't on the Grand Prix circuit, but she took a fifth place, knows the mountain, and she really needs to know it, not being able to see. Boarding by Braille, so to speak, here today. And she cruises through the finish line with a great time. 121.14 for Rosie Fletcher. She now moves into a tie for first place. And maybe the insurance she needs for a trip to Nagano, Japan. She, of course, won in Sugarloaf. A win here overall would certainly get her on that team without question. Well, what a comeback story, though, for Lisa Cosglow. Fourth back in Sugarloaf. She broke her back at the end of the 96 season, has rehabilitated. And back. She's running for Nagano as well. Great competitor in Lisa Coslow, a definite fireball on the course here. She is vicious when it comes to coming from behind, but here she's in the lead, just looking to hold on to that first place. She's last to go here in round number two because she was our top finisher after one round. Been training with the same coach, Nick Calavito, here for about six seasons now. Great form we're seeing here, patience, controlled arms, good balanced body. And I'm telling you, she's getting no break. The snow's still coming down hard, had to deal with the ruts. 120.3 for Cosglow, added up with run number one, a 108. 228.81 in Cosglow. 
right up to the top of the leaderboard. Coming through, 228.81. She just heard the news. Oslo, the winner here in Mount Bachelor in the women's giant slalom. What a great day for her. Julia Romy, the Canadian second. Rosie Fletcher tied for second. Helps the effort for the first ever U.S. Olympic snowboard team. If we were to put that team together today, Fletcher would be on. Cosglow, Sandra Van Ert, and Leslie Olson. Here's Kevin with our winner. Any words from the proud parents here for today's winner, Lisa Cosglow? <laughs> We're really proud of her. She's they been have their tickets already. <laughs> yeah. Tickets to Nagano? Bought them already. <laughs> She uh, certainly has worked very, very hard. It's been a tough um, couple of years, and I'm really grateful for how well she's been doing. Well, that's rad, Dad. Appreciate it. Still to come, more big air. We'll turn out the lights again and go high flying from Mount Bachelor. But next, the men's half pipe competition. Stick around. Oh, let's see. Oh, it says you've been seen in the movies. That should read at the movies. Mm. And you've built models, but never really actually modeled. Well, quite frankly, you the man! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Is she my co-star? Now she is. Why are so many small businesses so busy on Friday? They're using Fridays free from Sprint in so many ways. They're getting all their domestic long distance on Fridays absolutely free. Businesses that spend $50 a month or more with Sprint get that. Plus calling card calls, free on Fridays. What's more, even their toll-free service is free. So do more and save more till the year 2000 with Fridays free. Call Sprint at 1-800-598-5000. We help your business do more business. Today, we're tracking migrating herds of alpine snowboarders. Seems one of them has fallen behind. Maybe we can help. Let's go in for a closer look. Steady. Just as I thought, it's his boots. Good work, Jim. Easy now, fella. Look at him go. Until next time. loves his job and the third door in his Chevy S10. It's one of a kind, just like Duke. Chevy S10, like a rock. Welcome back to the Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix here in Mount Bachelor. Believe it or not, Mother Nature has let up on the snow for a little while. It's time to get set for the half pipe. Here we see the start area once again. Nice entrance ramp, length 377 feet. Back and forth they go, up and down through the half pipe. Great big air, a really beautifully shaped pipe today. Depth is 12 feet, lots of air time available for each and every competitor. 46 feet in width, and some of the riders calling this the best pipe they've ever been in. After one run on the half pipe, Todd Richards with the lead, Linus and Powers battling it out between second and third, and the rest of the field. To the start gate we go. After one run, Jim Moran posts a 32.2 on the scale of 50. Got about a B minus. Jimmy Rockstar Moran here. <laughs> Didn't do as well as he would have hoped on his first run, but he can make up for that with lofty backside airs like that. Huge front side indie there. And with our follow cam, you get a real perspective of how high these sides really are. Moran sketching out 27-8, even worse on run number two for Jimmy. Tough break at the bottom of the second run here, but he started off with a lot of power. Jim Moran goes huge on his backside air, and that's one of the main points the judges are looking for, amplitude. The crowd came out to see big time showmanship like that front side. Style and amplitude, the big factors here in the men's half pipe. Tom Chechen next, Mammoth Lakes, California. He'll be home for the third stop on the Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix, but now he's playing the away game. 
18 years old, a fairly young rider here at Mount Bachelor. Showing his strength in the half pipe. So far we've seen big, clean, traditional straight airs are called. No rotations and no inverts for Thomas. There's our first rotation. Getting a lot of great grabs in as well. Judges like to see that. Strong run, big airs all the way, no inverts, but a good point placing there. Tom Chechen after two, 69 on the board. Tom delivered really good straight big airs, but here he makes the judges happy with a 720 rotational air. Very large, skids down the half pipe wall a little bit, cost him some speed. Chechen now in fifth position. Engelsman after one run, 35.6. He's constantly getting top placements in Border X and in Big Air, has yet to really make a mark in the half pipe competition. Chris Engelsman is one of the most talented riders on the circuit. He can ride forward or backward. He can even ride this half pipe with one foot out of his bindings. The guy's an incredible athlete in anything he does. There he goes for the big crowd pleaser, the inverted rodeo, connects to 720. He's putting it all together with a lot of style. Seeing more than we normally do out of Chris Anglesman. A little sketchy on the finish line, not bad. Add together both runs, 66.7, good enough to put him in the top five. Chris combined every element of freestyle riding here, and with powerful moves like this alley-oop rodeo flip and landing cleanly on the wall there, the judges are surely impressed. Impressed with that trick, but not the entire run, unfortunately. Fifth place, the best Anglesman will finish today. That's because there are more riders to come. Also, later in the show, we'll head back to the big kicker, the launch pad for snowboarders, the Airwalk Aaron style competition. But next, the women will take to the half pipe. Don't miss it. Are you wasting money on spoiled food? Then you need Eurosealer, the amazing new sealer that creates an airtight seal so food lasts longer. Eurosealer creates a seal so airtight even water won't leak. Eurosealer keeps cereal crunchy, vegetables fresh, and deli meat delicious. Now on this exclusive TV offer, you can get Eurosealer for only $19.95. Call now and get Eurocan free. Eurocan leaves edges incredibly smooth. You can even reapply the lid. That's a $40 value all for only $19.95. Chicago fan here in the middle of your opponent's home arena? No, everybody's been great. No, no problem. No, no big deal. Tune into Sports Center for the best sports moments of 97. Which ones deserve a fan's choice ESPY? Watch Sports Center or log on to ESPN Sports Zone and make your picks for the ESPYs. left to go in the men's half pipe competition here at the U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix. These are your current leaders. We'll take a look back at the women's competition in the half pipe in just a moment, but first a look ahead. Nagano, Japan, hosting the 98 Winter Olympics, site of the first ever Winter Olympics snowboard competition. The half pipe will be taking place in the Kanbayashi Snowboard Park. Not the same venue, however, for the giant slalom competition. That'll be at Mount Yakabatai in the Shiga Kogan region. A 900-some foot vertical drop. Kara Beth Burnside, winner in Sugarloaf after one run here in the half pipe in Mount Bachelor. 28 and a half points on the board. After her win in Sugarloaf, she expressed her desire to continue to work on amplitude in her half pipe routines. Carabeth knows all the tricks. Now she's just trying to make them larger. Good news for the half-pipe riders. The snow not coming down nearly as hard as it was in the GS. The bad news, the snow that did come down makes it pretty slow in here. 
The super action follow cam shows Karabeth smooth style back and forth from front side to back side walls. Closes with a nice backside 540. 27-8 the total, 56.3 for Karabeth Burnside out of Orange, California. Back in the start gate, Shannon Dunn from Steamboat Springs knows what it's like to win in the half pipe. Two first place finishes last season. She's got a large arsenal of tricks. She can do it all. Inverted aerials, really big air, amplitude, rotations. There she uncorks the 720. Smooth riding style, nice 360, well above the lip there. Backside grab, about head high on the crowd. Lands a clean alley-oop there. Well, that's snow in the middle getting to her a little bit. Backside 540, she's a little past the finish line there, but just going for fun points. Shannon Dunn, 57.8. Here we see her unleash the rotation. I think her motto is spin to win. A real innovator in the half pipe. She charges each and every hit. And with that run, Dunn moves into the lead with one rider to go, and that's Michelle yours. Taggart. Third in the half pipe in Sugarloaf. 17, you're on. It's all yours, Michelle, it's all yours. You hear a little vote of confidence as she heads out the start gate and the hometown crowd behind her. Lots of confidence in Michelle's riding right now. She is impressing family and friends. It's so much easier with the crowd support to go big and risk it all. Runs like this, she is on her way to Nagano, back to back 540s. She is putting it all together there. And you hear almost the entire town of Salem, Oregon, right behind Michelle Taggart. Here we see her link it together. Front side, 540, lands at the top of the wall, carries all sorts of speed back down and across the flat bottom. There's that great hometown support we talked about. Kevin Delaney's made his way down hillside. Kevin, take it away. Michelle Taggart, today's winner of the women's half fight here at Mount Bachelor. Tell me about your strategy going into this run. Looks like you got a lot of fans here as well. I know, I'm so happy everyone came up today. And I just wanted to do good for these guys. I had a really good time. I know you had some uh, rough road coming through uh, Sugarloaf and stuff, really wanted to do well. What uh, was your strategy coming into this event? Uh, I just really wanted to push myself in, uh, in the amplitude section and try for the bigger air. It was kind of hard today because the half pipe was slow, but um, just get the amplitude and stick my landings and just have two solid runs. Solid runs and very solid scores. Michelle Taggart, the versatile rider with a 61.2. Done, Burnside. Burns and Christie rounding out our top five. And here's how we look right now for the Grand Prix standings. If we made up our Olympic team as of this stop, Burnside, Taggart, Dunn, and Burns would all be on. But there's one stop to go. Still to come in our show from Mount Bachelor, the Airwalk Air and Style Contest will go big in just a little bit. And four riders left on the men's half pipe. It's next. I hope my car gets fixed today. <laughs> and my sink. <laughs> and my furnace. <laughs> and my lawnmower. What? You idiot, you're gonna get us caught. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Eddie! Make it a Bud Light. Caitlin Keats, nature lover. She also loves the new interior of the Chevy S10. There's a lot to be said for the great indoors. Chevy S10, like a rock. You know all those stories you hear about how good it was, and how much fun we had, and how young we all used to be how much it all mattered, and how much we all cared, and how no one has ever done it higher, or faster, or harder, or better. All those stories you hear, they're all true.
Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix. Men's half pipe final. Taking a look at the Nordic Center here in Mount Bachelor. 7,500 feet above sea level. Air's a little thin. Zach Horowitz, after one run, 36.6 on the board. A second shot, the snow is beginning to fall again. Great score for Zach after his first run. He is loving his position right here. He just needs to maintain. Starts off with the fat and lofty alley-oop. Follows with a big backside method. Even with the snow falling, you see visibility still pretty good. Yeah! Nice 720 grab there. Really sketched out in the landing. Costs him all sorts of speed. Horowitz trains in Snowmass, Colorado. He admitted last year that focus was a pretty big problem. He's tried to get it together this season. The total after two, 70.3. Zach approaches the front side wall here with a lot of speed. Uncorks a front side, 720. But upon landing, has to place his hand in the snow. Costs him some valuable speed across the pipe. Fourth place now for Horowitz. Ross Powers next, 18 years old. He has so much potential. Coach Peter Foley loves this young guy. 96 world champion in the half pipe. This guy has an amazing amount of competition confidence. He just won first in the slope style and first in the half pipe at the X Games, which you saw on ESPN. Watch for some pretty tough technical tricks. This guy goes huge. Amplitude is his specialty, but landings are the bread and butter for Ross Powers. There you saw unbelievable stick in the landings. No hands, not even flex in the legs. Terrific board control. Ross Powers, 37.1, and that bumps him up top to first place. Ross Powers has everything in his runs. Here he goes for the 720, lands low in the transition, but the landing was perfect. Equal weight on both feet. Carries the speed across the wall. Back to back 720s, and again, a clean landing. Playing shuffleboard with our top riders, Bjorn Linus after one run, 37.4 on the board. His focus, the 98 Olympic team. He definitely wants to be there. 20 years old. Bjorn Linus qualified into this event second to last. Comes off his first run with power and vengeance, and here he is putting together a mean second run. Lots of air. Doesn't matter how you get in, as long as you're on the dance floor when it counts. Front side lead there for Linus. A little slash attack to close it. Total 73, good enough for second place now. Amplitude and style here as he throws that backside method towards the judges. The crowd has really come out here to see big air. But combining big air with inverted rodeo flips like that is what it's all about. Well, everybody's looking up to the top. Todd Richards. Leader after one run with 39 points, one of the top three half pipers in the country. Todd Richard drops in with a string of first place victories behind him, a technically flawless rider. He'll usually warm up with a couple of grabs. We're seeing that the inverts should come here. The hawk and flip lands right on his feet. Perfect landing right back to large air. Here he goes for the McTwist, backside McTwist there. Air to fake you with the method grab. Unbelievable run for Todd Richards. 76 and a half points and the Chevy S10 big air of the day. Todd Richards' run is a clinic in half pipe riding technique. Look at this smooth body position, pumping the walls, heading into this very difficult hawk and flip. Our winner in Mount Bachelor standing by now with Kevin Delaney. Incredible run. First run, you really stomped it. Second run looked like you meant everything here. Coming off a little bit of a sketch in Sugarloaf, how are you feeling coming into today's event? Pretty stoked. This is the best fight we've had all year. Sick, I'm stoked, super pumped right now. Even though it's dumping out the tube, it's still super good, so pretty stoked right now. What are you using to uh, maximize your speed? You're getting bigger air than anybody and consistently landing those rotational inverts. The U.S. team tuna guy is insane. My boys, it's a jet. Final results in the men's half pipe. Richards the winner, Ross Powers second, Linus Scott Tucker Jr.
our top five. Here's how the Olympic bid is shaping up after a Mountain Bachelor. Richards hanging on, Ross Power second. Chioti and Khan, great performances in Sugarloaf. Not so good here in Mount Bachelor, but they're still hanging on. One more stop to go. And when we come back, we got more from Mount Bachelor, the Airwalk here in style. Stick around. The 1997 Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix presented by Chevy S10 Trucks has been brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the U.S. ski and snowboard teams. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Sprint, the official telecommunications provider to the U.S. ski and snowboard teams. Looking for Super Bowl tickets? Introducing Sprint Super Bowl prepaid phone cards. 32 collectible cards, each an authentic replica. Free to new customers for joining and staying with Sprint. Good trade, Chops. <coughs> so who are we going to call? How about a cab? To get your free phone cards, call 1-800-PIN-DROP. Ew, yuck. Joey got an icky kiss. Mm. Well, it won't look icky to mom if it's developed right. See, a Kodak lab technician will make those eyes shiny and bright and pink in those chubby cheeks. So the picture will come out right the first time. And there are extras to help remember how long ago kisses were yucky. And get reprints of that smoochy wet moment. So get great pictures and more ways to enjoy them. Choose Kodak Premium Processing. The Senior Tour hits Key Biscayne for the first full field event of 98. Trevino and Murphy have won here before, but local favorite Ray Floyd wants a win on the course he calls home. The Royal Caribbean Classic. Coverage begins Friday at 3.30 on ESPN. It is coming down here at the Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix. Welcome back, everybody. Mount Bachelor, Oregon, the Airwalk Air and Style Contest. Michael, Michael Chuck in the gate. Set to go, visibility kind of low. Final three riders. Michael Chuck has been inventing his own moves in the halfpipe as of late. We can expect some big moves off here. An inverted 720. That pays big. The crowd as well, loving it. 260 points for Michael Chuck. This guy commits everything he has to these air and style contests. An inverted 720. Great landing, crowd pleaser. He either needs cash or he is just fearless. Eric Linus can hear the cheers of the crowd down below. One more jump to go for this brother of Bjorn Linus. Big snowboard family. Eric shifts to Fakie, he's going off this jump, riding backwards. And he commits to the 900 with an extra 180 on landing. Launching it early to get it all in. Linus, the first jump, the best on the night, 248 points. This guy commits, big spinning move here, lands cleanly. Big, big air for Linus. One more to go. Bachelors waiting down below, Jason Borgstedt up top. The kicker awaits. And a little launch off the top for some extra speed. Swirling winds here at Mount Patrick can throw the riders off really easily. Borgstead commits to a lot oh. of spins. He lands a 900, and he landed that jump backwards, folks. He landed riding backwards, not an easy maneuver. Look at Jason, show me the love. Jason here blasts off into the spotlights with a 900 tail grab, lands riding backwards and sticks it cleanly. Crowds go nuts for that stuff. Borgstead with the style and amplitude off the Airwalk Air and Style Contest. Big kicker, the winner tonight, Michael Michael Chuck. Good effort, second, and Eric Linus coming in third. Borgstead enjoys his moment under the spotlight here at night in Mount Bachelor. Next time we talk to you, though, a pretty exciting time. The Bud Light U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix comes to you from Mammoth, California, 12 midnight next Wednesday, where we will name the first ever United States Olympic snowboard team. Who will be the members? Top four riders in giant slalom and in the halfpipe on the men and women's side. We look forward to seeing you there.
from Mount Bachelor, Oregon. For Kevin Delaney, I'm Doug Dunbar. We'll see you next week.